In this edition of Modeling Fundamentals, we're going to run through the connection type shear plate. The shear plate would be what most people would commonly refer to as your standard fin plate. So let's have a look at these guys. Now the fin plate or shear plate connection is found in the Pro Steel Tasks W6. Okay, there's several different types of options we've got here. We're just going to start with the top one, number one, shear plate. Okay. Read the command line down here, you know, get into the habit of ask, you know, checking what it's asking us. And the, the procedure is supported to supporting, okay, which is standard for all ProSteel objects. Now, the Australian localization is set to work out of the box. You can see I've got a standard three bolt shear plate here. Um, and that is done to the standard Australian settings of um, 35 mil edge distance and 70 centers. So we'll kick off here at the shapes tab. You can see here out of the list, I've got a fly out here, so I must choose the thickness out of the list here if, if there's a fly out there. Um, and it's telling us here just sort of grade out what it's actually used. So it's used 90 by 10 flat in this instance by default. Okay. Um, We've got some options here. I'm going to run through these options a little bit later for you just to explain them a little bit more. Um, if I used flat steel, um, the ECS, if I rotate it, the ECS runs up and down. If I uncheck, uncheck here, you can see the ECS runs out from the supported member that way. Okay. Which makes it very difficult to use 90 by 10 flat if it's running the wrong way. Okay. You can see here 200 by 10, 210 by 10 plate is what it's had to use if I rotate it around. All right, if I rotate flat steel and run up and down, it will use 90 by 10 flat. Always check what side, whether left side, right side, so forth, that you um, want to put your cleat on. Please be aware, can I get this connection together? Okay. If you have a look here, I've actually stuck it on both sides just for just for fun. Obviously, we can't get that connection together, but be mindful. Can I get this connection? Can I physically get it together on site? I, you know, on this instance here, you can see the cleat is on the outside, which means the beam, when the crane picks it up, would actually have to bring it from the inside of the building out. The next thing to take into consideration with our cleat is our location and our offsets and gaps that work hand in hand together with each other. So the first thing we're going to do, let's change our view so we can just see what it's doing here a little bit better. So I'm just going to go object view centered and we're going to look into the side of the connection here. So what we've got here, currently I'm running a gap of 20 millimeters and a vertical offset of 35 from the edge. Okay, so that means the edge of the cleat, if I set this to zero, you can see the edge of the cleat is now zero. Okay and the bolt is 35 millimeters down, which is set in the next tab. If I uncheck the from edge, that tells ProSteel now that I want that cleat central down the middle of my supported shape. So you can see it's straight down the center line here. All right, so if I tick that, tick that back on, vertical offset is zero from edge. If I make it the lower edge, it tells it that I want the bottom of the cleat lining up with the bottom of the beam. All pretty simple. All right, from the top, from the bottom. The final option here is up to the first bolt, which means the center of the first bolt is to, at top of steel. And from there, number option number three would govern our vertical offset. So at the moment, I've got 35 millimeters down there, and I want to go an additional 35 millimeters to give me 70 mil down to my first hole. So from that corner, down to my hole, or down to my cleat rather, is 35 millimeters, and then an additional 35 down to the hole center. Next is option number two, which is gap, and that is the steel on steel distance. So if I set that to 10, you can see that that closes up the gap between the two, the supported and the supporting members. Okay, you can also see here that our selected shape now is 80 by 10 plate, and it switched to plate because we can't get 80 by 10 in Australia, it's only 90. So if you've seen that it's used uh, a plate, please tick on here, use polyplate. That should change the color to, um, to, to brown for plate. I'll get you to 
fix the assignment here to up the top configuration file. Okay, it's a little mistake that I've made in the Australian localization where I didn't have that ticked on. Um, and it should be blue for if it uses flat and brown if it goes to plate. All right, so if we reset this back to 20, which is default, it should use 90 by 10 flat bar. It should go to blue and that will match our standard Australian defaults. We'll move to the next tab now, which is our distance tab. In here, we have our distribution in the shape direction, which is along our shape. You can see here at the moment, I've got the number set to one. If I change it to two, based on these distances here, it will add a new set of bolts in. So if I change it from two to three, at 70 centers, it will place a new set of bolts. Okay, it's really that simple. We can, um, we can also add slots and so forth within here, and that will be center to center. This switch here will allow it to rotate the slot for us. Now, we've got our edge distance and our distance inside of 35 mil. So that's 35 mil from the edge back to the, back to the center line of the bolts, and then 35 millimeters from the center line out to the edge of cleat. All pretty simple. And if you change it to two, then that's when option number three kicks in. Now, distribution across means how many bolts up and down. So we've got an edge distance of 35 also and 70 centers. And depending on the number or quantity of bolts that I put in, it just keeps adding them in at 70 centers with a 35 mil edge distance. Now, the only other thing that I'd like to bring to your attention here is number four is a standard vertical edge distance of 35 mil. The top and bottom will be the same. You, you can't make the two different. If we move on now to the connect tab, this will be the bolting for our connection. So I've chosen an 8.8S as my default style. Please pick a bolt from the list M20 and the work loose is the clearance of the hole on the bolt. Okay, I can also choose to weld my supported or supporting shape, which will put it up and down the edge of the cleat here. And we just select our weld style and nominate our thickness here from any templates that we've created. Moving to the coping tab. Okay, the coping tells uh, ProSteel that I will allow the object within another object. So let's have a look at what I'm talking about here. On our left, is a profile of a ProSteel object. On the right is the boundary box that I'm talking about. Going one step further, if I was to have the tick switch for coping switched off, so no cope, like on the left, the supported object cannot go into the supporting object. On the right, I show that the coping has been allowed on, which means the supported shape is actually being allowed into the supporting shape. So coming back to our dialogue, if we have a template for coping that has been saved, we can choose our preferred template from the list. Moving on now to punch holes, this will put a little spot mark on each of the corners of our plate. We would use this if we don't want scribing, but it is for use with NC data. The next tab moving on we've got is our grouping. And depending on what we've got switched on here, tells ProSteel what the user wants to be grouped to what, whether it's grouped to the supporting object or to the supported object. So if we have a look, I'll just move this out of the way and we go to our grouping, you can see that these switches here that I've got on at the moment with bolts, if I add to group and select the, say the supporting uh, so supported shape. You can see the bolts belong to the beam, which means when we lift the beam into place, those bolts go with that beam, which is what we'd expect to do. If we have a look at the column, you can see the fin plate itself belongs to the column. So uh, that, that's uh, pretty standard here in Australia. So let's have a look at what these switches do. These are the default actions for what the switches do when we when we toggle them on and off and so forth. So I encourage that you maybe just pause this, you could print this out or so forth if it makes it a little bit easier for you to follow. But by default, I would normally group the bolts to the supported shape. So when it's lifted in place, uh, the bolts are the ones that go with it. 
Moving on to our next tab would be our assignment tab. This gives us the ability to set our material grades, classes, descriptions and so forth. So if I use plate, polyplate, I could call it grade 250, so that comes out correct. If I use flat, it would be 300 plus. Um, um, we have the ability to set a part description. Um, don't forget, uh, I made a, a little mistake with the level um, um, in the Australian localization. Please set that to configuration file. All right, one step further, the connection data. This allows us to do a connection node. If we set a label and identifier for this connection, I can get a, a detail of this coming out. That would prompt ProSteel for a detail. All right, let's put this all together now. So we'll uh, connect up that second beam up to our column. So we'll go back to our shear plate, supported to supporting. Now let's, let's just have a look at this. We'll change the view around a little bit for this. So I'm looking down on this column here. All right, so I'm gonna go object view centered. I'll look down from the top, okay, looking down onto this column. Now remember, if I want it to go inside this column here, there's a boundary box. This boundary box here, this theoretical boundary box, if I want to let it into that boundary box, I've got to tell it in the coping data, you're allowed in. Okay? If I tell it, no, you're not allowed inside the boundary box by unticking it, it pushes it back outside. So I had a 20 mil edge distance, now it's just 20 mil outside this boundary box, see? And the final thing I want to make clear here is this top view is the easiest to put these connections in. I can see where that cleat is. I can see whether I can get this connection together. I can see whether it works or not. So please, when you're putting these in and you've checked your settings and so forth, jump in that plan view to put all of your shear plates in. So what do we do if we want to delete or edit one of these connections? Well, we simply select the cleat that has been created by this automatic connection. In AutoCAD, we would right click in the power product, we hold down the right mouse button. From there, we get a context menu asking us what we'd like to do. We can either change the connection or we can delete it entirely. Now, this is the only way we should delete connections is through this contextual menu. So if I choose to delete, we will get this dialog up with three different colored icons on it whereby green means, yes, I wish to delete the connection and all the components of that connection entirely. Yellow means delete the logical link, but leave the components behind because I want to manually edit the components of this, of this connection. And the red cross means exit without making any changes. So in this instance, I wish to delete this connection. So I'd hit the green tick and everything to do with that connection will be deleted. All right, so we've got the connection right now. Now we want a lot more of the same connection. What we do is we would clone the connection that we want. So like we did with the last connection, I'm gonna select the object that's been created. I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button. And instead of deleting, this time I'd like to change. Now, the settings are pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with these settings. So down on the buttons, down the bottom here, we've got the clone on the right. Now, before we throw ourselves straight into this, just a little word of warning. Don't put two connections back to back on each other in, in the one operation, okay? Do it in two steps. Step one on the, on, the, on, the, on the left as example, and then step two on the right as example. Otherwise, it may lose track of uh, who belongs to what in this scenario, okay? So if we read the prompt line here, it says, identify the shear plate to match the properties or reset right mouse button to insert multiple shear plates. And we just want to look for this filter dialog up here before we start. From there, any order, supported, supporting, it doesn't really matter. Just don't do them back to back, okay? So you can see here, I, I'm not selecting those central ones. I'm just, just making sure that, you know, left and right are fine, but I don't do them back to back. All right, and I'll grab a couple over here, just, just so I don't, and I'll do the others in a separate operation. It's as simple as that. Just while I'm thinking about warnings too, just be cautious, please don't connect one beam uh, like I've got shown here and then divide it up later. It, it, really, every object should be divided if it's got central connections and so forth. Otherwise, it loses track of who owns the connection if I divide it up after I've placed the connection in.
at the very beginning of this tutorial, I went on with some of the options that were available to us in the very first tab of the shear plate connection. And I just want to uh, show you some of these a uh, little bit more interesting connections and how we work with those. So I'm just going to go object view centered on a, crank, a rafter type object, a cranked object. And I'm going to put a use the shear plate connection with this and I'm going to show you how some of these options in the first tab work. So supported to supporting and you can see it uses the default connection that I placed earlier. And I'm just going to run through some of the options here. Let's kick off with cut plate and you can see here it lines up now, it moves the plate into the column and if you look really carefully uh, it's actually rotated, it's greyed out the rotate flat steel and actually moved the ECS out along the center of the object. So it's actually now trying to make that out of, out of plate. So in that instance you'd probably want to tick on use polyplate. Alright, so the next one we'll have a look at is normal to cut plane. And what that means is it's going to spin the cleat around so that it runs up and down parallel to the column in this instance here. So depending on how you want to, how, how the clear is called up by the engineer, depends on what we'll do with these tick switches. So that wraps up our shear plates for today. A couple of things to just be wary of and just remember, okay, is make sure you divide your objects up well before you connect. If you've forgotten to do something, delete the connections, divide your object up and start again. Okay, check your connections thoroughly before you go through and put more in. Check it in multiple views, all right? Otherwise you make mistakes and they go right through everything. And finally, don't clone back-to-back -back connections because it may lose track of, of who owns what connection.